Hello everyone, Sloth Cakes here, and welcome to another episode of Amphibious Analysis, where we analyze and break down the amphibious mobile suits of the Gundam universe. Now today, we're going to be looking at Xeon's least amphibious looking amphibious mobile suit, and it's going to be the MSM-04 Jigu Wagu, because an elephant's trunk just screams waterfaring machine. But before we address the elephant in the room, let's look at the model number, because today we're going to be looking at a variant, and that's going to be a variant of the MSM-048 guy. Now what does the G stand for in MSM-04G? Maybe the G stands for gigantic, but the Guagu isn't really that big, he does have a strong profile to him and silhouette. Maybe the G stands for guard, because he is a defensive mobile suit. What does it actually stand for? We really don't know, and... All the guesses are just speculation and just shot in the darks because in general a lot of model numbers we never have exact definitions for it, and a lot of it is just theory. So your guess is as good as mine and I couldn't really find anything official. But if you guys have a better explanation or just want to give it a shot in the dark, leave it down in the comments. Now let's address the giant mechanical seafaring elephant in the room and his appearance. And while being a variant of the 8 guy, visually speaking he shares next to nothing about him. And if we compare this to his brother unit the Igu guy which you can clearly see a resemblance, the Guagu only shares a handful of visual similarities. And that would be things like his legs having that similar hoof like thing with that side circle. And it's kind of dawning to me that I just referred to the Guagu and 8 guys legs as hooves. So, um, let's move on. But now focusing more on the Guagu, we have a barrel-shaped body which looks massively different than the 8 guys. We have these large arms with that are just three massive barrels. Then to the most notable thing about the Guagu, the very large disc-shaped head. Which just looks like someone got the 8 guy and just bonked his head flat. And if we look at the mono eye, the 8 guy has a much larger motion being able to go 360 and back and forth, while the Guagu can only cover the front of him with some distance to the left and right, but he has no to none up and down motion. And the biggest thing about the Guagu, and easily the most noticeable, his weird elephant trunk. Now if we take a closer look, this thing clearly has articulation at multiple points, meaning it can move around, which is kind of really extremely weird. But at the end, we do see a heat duck like thing, which is also found on the Egu guy and 8 guy, however the Guagu's is obviously much, much bigger. So the big question is, why does he have an elephant's trunk? Well, the short answer is it's a heat dunk. It's made to vent out excess heat. Now, what does he do that makes all this excess heat, and why does it have to be produced out of this giant trunk? Well, we're gonna be getting into that, and... There might be some good answers, might be some bad answers, and I'm going to give you guys my overall gripe with it, but we'll get to that when we get to it. But let's move on to some history. Developed in 079 and deployed in 096, and manufactured by Xeonar Company, the Guaku is a specialized mobile suit for the invasion of Jaburo. His purpose is to be an armored mid-range support to lay support fire for other invading mobile suits. And while loosely based off the 8 guy, he doesn't share much in common with him, or his cousin unit the Egu guy. Now moving back to history, while the Guagu was made for the Battle of Jaburo, him like many other mobile suits got shafted because of Charles' early assault. Now while they were constructed at California base, it's noted to be a few of them and we have no idea how much a few is. But what we do know is, while some mobile suits got deployed late into the battle, the few Guagus that were constructed at California base did not participate at all in the assault of Jaburo. Which in one way is kind of funny that the mobile suit that was made for a certain battle did not get to participate in said battle. Now don't feel too bad about this guy because he did get a chance to shine. During the attack of the car by Xeon Remnants, we see a modified Guagu, and we'll talk about what modified means later. This Guagu, despite its age, was able to do some very surprising things. This thing, while being a support mobile suit, was holding its own against modern mobile suits at close range. It was able to destroy two Nemos before it was taken down by three mobile suits, being one Gym 3 and two Gym 2 supporting it. And while some will say that this scene is complete fan service, and I kind of agree with them, I do want to bring this in some form of reality, so what I like to think is that it's a mixture of a few things. 
First is the obvious, it could just be an ace pilot that's really comfortable at piloting the Gawagu that was inside that mobile suit. Plus it could be just be that the mobile suit, despite its age, is very solid and the modifications it got, which we'll talk about later, did help it a lot with its specific task. But it could also be a mixture of that the mobile suits fighting the Guagu have no idea what the Guagu is capable of or what it can do. So to them, the Guagu is a brand new mobile suit. And we can throw other things into the pot as well. Maybe the pilots were new and haven't seen much battle or no battle at all. The overall assault caused wide confusion in the enemy side. Or it could just simply be that the mobile suits on the Federation side weren't fighting at full capacity just because the Federation were trying to protect a city. So you don't want to destroy the city accidentally while trying to protect it. This ain't Power Rangers. So they had to hold back and make sure that they weren't shooting stray rockets in the buildings or just falling into said buildings, which they still did. But, you know, it's the thought that counts. So pick and choose, mix and match, whatever you feel like is the best reason behind this. So as we move on to stats and numbers, we're going to be comparing the Guagu to the 8 guy because he is a variant. But we're going to be throwing the Egu guy in there because why the hell not? Standing at a head height of 17.4 meters, the Guagu is shorter than the other two. And we can visually see why, since the Guagu has a much flatter head. And while the Guagu is shorter, it should come to no surprise with his heavy armor and, well, all of his extra things like that trunk and those really large barrels that he outweighs the others are coming in at an empty weight of 137.3 tons while the 8 guy and the Egu come at 91.6 and 113.7 tons. And again it's understandable and with no surprise considering his role as a mobile suit and his overall weight that he is the slowest out the bunch in every department. Now finally to his generator, and he has the usual that most mobile suits had at the time, and that's a Bernofsky Ultra Compact Fusion Reactor. And he does have a higher output compared to the others, coming at a 2660, with the 8 guy and Egu coming at 1870 and 2010. And this is due to first needing more thrust and power to lift his fat ass and move, and also the Guagu has more advanced and stronger beam weapons compared to the others. Well, compared to the 8 guy, considering the 8 doesn't even have beam weapons. But we'll go more into detail with this when we talk about his beam weapons. But this is a great segment to go onto his weapons, so let's get in there. So before we get into it, there's two quick notes I want to say. The first one's an answer to a question that I feel like some people might ask, so I just want to answer it here. And the answer is no. The Guagu's trunk is not a weapon. It has never been shown to be used as a weapon. And if he did use it as one, it being a heat dunk, I doubt it has like that heavy weight and sturdiness behind it. And honestly, while the Guagu has some motion with the thing, if he could lift it high enough to swing and were to smack a mobile suit with it, I feel like it would do more damage to the trunk than the mobile suit. And we'll come back to the trunk later because I'm not done with it just yet. The second note is the modified Guagu. In short, during Gundam Unicorn, the Xeon Remnants found the old Guagu and modified it. What we know what was changed was its two weapons, and while the new weapons on them are very similar to the old weapons, they do serve a different purpose and have different things about them. So I'll just make sure to notify and make it clear that this is the old Guagu's weapons or the new Xeon Remnants Guagu's weapons and talk about why they changed them. But now we got that clear, let's get on to them. Now we're going to be starting on the chest where we see a weapon that's found on many amphibious mobile suits and that's the Mega Particle Cannon. However, like the Zok, this bad boy's got four of them. Now Mega Particle Cannons are Mega Particle Cannons. We covered them before, we're going to continue to cover them every single time. These things are very scary weapons being able to punch through most things and turn them into Swiss cheese. Now the Guag can make quick work out of any mobile suit because of this and being able to fire all four of them at the same time, well that's one hell of a shot coming your way. And thankfully the Guagu does have a good generator to back this up. Now it's nowhere close to the Zox which also has four NPCs, but it is 52% higher than the eight guys. Not only that, the Guagu does have an unorthodox cooling system, which is his massive trunk. This trunk allows them to expel all the excess heat the NPCs create, which in turn allows the generator to keep cool and allow them to use more shots. Sadly, we don't actually know the true fire rate for his NPCs. All we can do is speculate, 
But considering the things he has, like his generator and his unique cooling system, and looking at other mobile suits like the Zark and the Garg, we can come to an educated conclusion. And what I believe is that the Guago's rate of fire is the same as the Garg's. Because if we look at the Garg, he does have a lower generator output, two NPCs, but a unique cooling system. And with those things, he's allowed to fire both his NPCs at a decently consecutive rate. Now he's not machine gunning it or anything, but he is shooting shot after shot, just a little break in between. So with the Guagu having a higher generator output and also a unique cooling system for the NPCs, I do believe this makes sense. We just have to take into account that the Guagu does have four of them instead of two. However, he can fire two at a time, it doesn't really matter. He doesn't have to dedicate to the four shots. But overall, this should give us a rough idea of his rate of fire. Next up is what the Xeon Remnants did to this weapon, and they replaced the four NPCs with four beam guns, and they're not the Federation beam guns the gyms have, they're completely different. And while the NPCs fire a large concentrated single shot, the beam guns when fired, fire this continuous thin beam that cuts, melts, and goes through whatever they come into contact with. It's kinda like the Guagu has four laser pointers on his chest. And with this image it kinda makes them look like udders. Anyways, this type of firing isn't dedicated to the Guagu, because in the same fight we see a Zaku sniper using a sniper rifle that fires a very similar shot. So you might be asking, why did Xeon Remnants change the NPCs into the beam guns? Well there's a few good reasons for it. First, it consumes less energy. You can imagine that a large NPC shot would take much more energy to fire than this thin continuous beam. And because of this, you can last longer in the battlefield. You can fire NPC shots one after another, but it's going to put a lot of strain on the generator. However, with the beam gun, you can continuously fire this thing, and it's going to put a lot less strain, allowing you to fire more. And this was a very good option for this Guagu, because unlike the Guagu's original purpose of being a support fire mobile suit, kind of in the back, this Guagu was front and center fighting mobile suits at close range, so he needed a weapon he could continuously fire. And you would think that the beam gun is a lot weaker than the MPC, but it's not. It's still depicted to go straight through mobile suits easily, so that's a plus. So for negatives, the first negative is the limited range. And while we don't know the range of the beam gun, it's only noted that it does have limited range compared to the MPC. And while not too big of a deal, another negative that I thought of was the AoE damage. To put it simply, the NPC leaves a bigger hole, so you can aim more in general areas and it might hit something important, while the beam gun leaves a much smaller hole, so you're gonna make sure that smaller hole goes through things that are important so it can destroy a mobile suit. Now plus side is that you can drag that smaller hole across, making it a lot easier to go through things. But that's just a small little negative I thought of that might actually be something that a pilot has to deal with. And that covers his chest weapons, either be the OG or the Xeon Remnants one, they're fairly straightforward but cool weapons. And while he does have a chest swivel which does allow him to aim differently compared to things like the Garg, it's still the same pros and cons that Garg has. He has to face whatever he shoots, so if something sneaks up behind him, he's kinda shit out of luck. But there is one thing that I don't like about this weapon, and that's the fact that his trunk can easily cover or go over one of his NPCs. So the Guagu can potentially accidentally shoot his no own nose off. And yes, he could easily not shoot the NPC that the trunk is covering. It just seems like a pretty big flaw that the trunk, which cools down his NPCs, he can accidentally destroy with said NPCs, which would cause problems for, again, said NPCs. I just find that, like, really funny and odd for some reason. Moving to the Guagu's arms, we have the three long, large barrels. These barrels can fire an impressively and terrifyingly large 320mm rockets. And to quickly go over the rockets, they're 320mm rockets, they're as big as the barrel hole, they're simple ass rockets, it's pretty self explanatory there. You don't need to be a genius to know that big rocket makes big boom. Now one rocket can easily destroy or badly damage a mobile suit, two of them definitely destroy. But the Guagu's got six barrels for six rockets, so after that you're definitely gonna turn that mobile suit into dust. But you might be asking, Sloth, what's the point of having these 6 barrel rocket launchers? Isn't that a tad bit overkill? Well first, there's never enough rocket launchers. And second, you would be right. 
However, you have to remember his purpose, which was to invade Jaburo, so mobile suits aren't the only thing he's gonna be shooting at. Jaburo being an underground federation base, you bet there are plenty of shiny expensive things that are begging for a 320mm rocket to hit it. Mobile suit hangers, weapon storages, important buildings, and everything in between, the Guwagu, if left to his own devices, can cause a decent amount of property damage. Now for a blessing, you're going to really appreciate the support fire since not that many Fetty pilots are want to peek cover when they know that there's six rocket launchers pointing at them. And on the flip side, we have a curse because the guy behind you that's backing you up with fire is using a rocket launcher to do so. Six of them, so you might get caught in the crossfire. Not only that, if you go towards melee, he can't really help you with this weapon considering you'll get caught in the blast as well. So what did Xeon Remnants replace this with? Well, during the fight, instead of big ass rockets, the Xeon Remnants Guangu has much, much smaller caliber mini rockets. And with just a few of them, you still do a good job at destroying mobile suits. And with the six barrels, delivering that few amount to a gym's chest is no problem. Now, overall, these rockets are much more geared towards mobile suit than mobile suit combat. Since the larger rockets would be overall easier to miss and dodge than the mini ones, and while devastating, it would be a problem using the larger rockets for close encounters, since you or your teammates could be caught in the crossfire. Now with smaller rockets comes smaller explosions, which is one of the biggest downsides is that you're not good at destroying terrain, bases, or other things like that. But one of the biggest upsides is with smaller rockets means you can carry more ammo, which in turn means you can last longer in the battlefield and you can continuously shoot this weapon much more than the larger rocket counterpart. And the final thing is ammo, and this is something we just don't have information about, and I would really like to, but we have no idea how much ammo the Guago can hold with both the large and the small rockets. Finally, I'm just going to quickly talk about ammo capacity because we don't have the in much information about this. With the large rockets, at worst it looks like he can hold one rocket in each barrel, however at best maybe he has another rocket behind it, giving him 12 shots instead. Now funny enough, the only reference I could find for the mini rockets was the model kit, where we see 7 rockets in each barrel, making 21 for each arm, or 42 in total. Now we don't know how much rockets are behind it, but I'm guessing it's a multiple of 7, so a multiple of 21 for each arm. And for the final segment, we have melee weapons, and the Guaku has no dedicated melee weapons in his base form. However, he could use his large head to pin down and tackle enemy mobile suits, or he could use his big ass barrels to crush and use blunt force. Now, while both of those aren't effective weapons, they're better than nothing. Now, this is only in his base form, and that sounds weird, but the Guagu has something he shares with the 8 guy and Egu guy, and that's detachable forearms. And to cut it short, the Guagu can equip a 5 finger manipulator, which is just a hand. Now, I'm not gonna go over all the things a 5 finger manipulator hand can do, it can do things that you expect a hand can do. However, what has the Guagu been shown to do with this thing? Well, the only thing he's been shown was holding a saber, which gives him an actual melee weapon. Which is really interesting, because now it gives him more melee capabilities. But you might be asking, what else can he do with this? What else can he hold? Well, I see no reason why he cannot hold things like Xeon machine guns and Xeon rocket launchers. Now, I don't think he would hold a rocket launcher, considering his original hand was basically one, but plus more. But I could see him hold a small machine gun in his hand for, well, whatever reason he wants to. So some may be asking, can he hold a beam weapon? I think he can hold a beam weapon considering he has the generator for it. But will he or should he is a different question. Considering his beam gun or MPC causes enough strain on his generator, I don't think it's a wise choice for him to have an additional beam weapon causing even more strain. If he were to use a weapon, the wisest choice would be a melee weapon or something that uses physical rounds. Now that we have weapons done, we're going to be moving on to iterations. First up is by the legendary Kondo himself, and this design is really futuristic. I know that's goofy to say with a series with giant robots, but when I say futuristic, I mean those designs of machines that are just really round, smooth. They're usually depicted as like one or two colors, like silver or all white. It's just a very clean looking depiction of the Guag. Now some key features I want to note is he has a very similar faceplate to that of the Dom. 
And if we go lower, the Guagu's nose looks a lot less articulated in this one, where a majority of the nose besides the end just looks like one piece, with the vent just looking like three simple pieces. And that's just something you see throughout this guy's body, even his legs, his NPCs, they're just much more simple and just much more smoother designs. However, the final key thing I want to note is his large barrels, where this guy clearly has four large barrels instead of three. And it could just be the design or the angle we're looking at, these barrels do look a lot shorter compared to the original Gwag. But overall, like I said in the beginning, he just looks really futuristic and I would love to see a full render of this guy. We only have this black and white image, but I know this guy's really shiny. Next up is the Guagu Kai, and this is an opposite of the previous one because this design is really busy. It just has much more detail going on, there's sharper edges, and there's a lot of nooks and crannies to this guy. This could just be the angle, however this Guagu's head is less of a disc and looks more like the Quibli's head going from front to back. And moving to the trunk, it looks a lot less detailed with a lot less articulation. It's very simple, however, it's a lot less like an elephant's trunk and more like a mosquito's mouth or any bug's mouth, which is really scary to look at. And for some smaller details, his NPCs are located much higher into his upside down triangular body and his legs are much bigger and look more like normal mobile suit legs. And for the biggest thing of all is the arms. This Guagu is depicted to have the five finger manipulator and we can't see too much about it but it's a five finger manipulator, not too much there to talk about. But things get interesting when we talk about his three long barrels and while that's similar to the old Guagu, his forearm instead of connecting to the end connects to the middle of it looking a lot like a turret you would find on a warship. And while we could talk about the overall design just being a lot more busy and have more things to it, the key thing I want to mention is the back of it, because that looks like an ammo box, which answers the biggest problem I had with the Guagu. He doesn't look like he can store a lot of ammo, and yes, that ammo box is small, however, his other hand's a five finger manipulator, so he can easily reload this weapon himself, and he'll probably keep the ammo on his back or on his side. Now, I'm a huge sucker for that design you see where one arm's a weapon and the other arm's a regular hand or just some form of manipulator. I'm just a huge fan of every time that's shown up in any form of media, so I'm not going to sit here and just fan gush about it, so let's move on. And for the final design, we're going to be looking at the Gundam Thunderbolt Guagu, and it is based off the Thunderbolt 8 guy, so it's going to have an overall different frame to him. And to put it simple, there's a few key things I want to talk about him. First is, he's really round, which is a common thing of Thunderbolt suits, but because of his roundness, he looks jacked. Like, this mobile suit looks like a Guagu that just hit the gym hard. He just looks muscular, and it's really uncomfortable to look at. But the uh, two other things I want to highlight is, because of his overall size, being that of the Thunderbolt 8 guy, his three long barrels don't look too long. They look really small compared to the rest of his body. And speaking of small, the Guagu's head is also the same, where originally the Guagu's head was massive, but this guy's is much, much smaller. And attached to that small head is an even smaller trunk, where it looks like his trunk can barely reach the top of his NPCs, so he's not going to be able to shoot it off, thankfully. But yeah, it's just a really buff Guagu with small arms and a small head. So overall, what can I say about the Guagu that I haven't said before? He's an interesting mobile suit with a very interesting job. He won't be deployed in every single battle, but the ones that he would be deployed in, he would be a massive help because, well, throwing a shit ton of rockets at a problem might solve that problem most of the time. And I do want to end it with this. Do you guys think that the Guagu would have made an impact during the One Year War? If he got deployed during the Battle of Jaburo, maybe if he had a skilled pilot, would he have changed anything? And maybe would Xeon benefit if the Guagu was mass produced? Or maybe you just think this guy was a useless mobile suit that didn't really have a purpose. Now, whatever you think, I do want to say this, and that's... Under that weird looking appearance with that weird ass trunk and that thick armor, the Guagu is still part of the 8-guy family, which gives him a special place in my heart. But anyways, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Amphibious Analysis and hope you enjoyed me rambling about a mechanical sea elephant for like 20 plus minutes. But like always, Sloth Cakes here and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, blah, 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 all that good stuff. Hope to see you all in the next video, but till then, have a good one.